from Cherished Life Queensland, Mr. Matthew Cliff and uh, Donna Purcell. Thank you both for being here before. I yes. recognise you, Donna. You've been before us before. Thank you. Mr. Hoffman, thank you. Who, who would like to start with an opening statement and then we can move to... Yes, I'm going to start, uh, committee, if that's OK. Uh, so, committee, thank you for your time. My name is Matthew Cliff. I'm the CEO of Cherish Life. Um, I'm actually going to use my time this morning to speak into some of the objections uh, to those who are opposing this bill. I'll be using uh, Children by Choice's submission as an example of the arguments of those who are opposing. And there's seven key objections. The first objection is to say that this bill is not evidence-based. One main issue for them is our, is our reliance on the perinatal data. However, the perinatal data is actually just one area of evidence that supports this bill. As our submission states, there are also numerous eyewitness testimonies from Queensland nurses, midwives, as we just heard, and even coroners. Plus, and most importantly, we have the testimonies of those who have actually survived the procedure itself. In fact, there's a network dedicated to the survivors of these procedures called abortionsurvivors.org. So the objection that the bill is not evidence-based is, is untrue. Next, according to Children by Choice's submission, the bill demonstrates a fundamental misunderstanding of abortion outcomes by conflating live births with signs of life. So let's actually look, I think it's important to look at the definition uh, of the terms in the Queensland guidelines. And here's the definition of a live birth. Signs of life may include beating of the heart, pulsation of the umbilical cord, breath efforts, definite movement of voluntary muscles, and other evidences of life. So apparently, when a baby is born alive after a failed abortion attempt and their heart is beating, we are wrong to say that the baby is alive and that it's a live birth. Likewise, when a baby is born alive after a failed abortion procedure and makes breath efforts, otherwise known as breathing, again, we're wrong to say that this baby is alive and that this is a live birth. And listen, there's no misunderstanding here at all. And I believe most Australians can see through this. We wouldn't apply those definitions to wanted babies. So why are we applying them to unwanted babies? Another objection is that this bill seeks to legislate abortion care rather than keeping it under the purview of healthcare professionals. And here's the issue. In any other circumstance in which a child is born, immediately that child has rights assigned to them by law. It is the legislative body that protects that child, and rightfully so. What those who are opposing the bill are suggesting is that because of the circumstances of the birth of these children, they should be denied their legislative right for protection. This is exactly what the bill seeks to address. This bill will ensure that, it, um, that it's not based on how a person interprets, it, interprets life or understands a guideline, but again, it provides a legal right to life. Next, according to Children by Choice, they state the proposed legislation should be based on accurate and transparent representations of public sentiment rather than emotional manipulation. We agree. The issue is that the public are grossly unaware that this takes place. We are more than happy to have this conversation publicly. Most Australians, again, would be horrified to know that this is taking place. They say we are misrepresenting public sentiment. Unfortunately, in their submissions, they don't even mention any public testimonies in their submissions. The next objection, is that this bill creates further barriers to the abortion procedure. They state, laws that knowingly target and legislate healthcare available to pregnant people experiencing disadvantage and pregnant people and their families experiencing distressing diagnosis is inequitable and creates further barriers. This is so misleading. Because again, this bill doesn't affect abortion in any way at all. It creates no barriers whatsoever. Again, all this bill is doing is legislated healthcare for babies who have been born alive as a result of a failed abortion procedure. Next, those opposing the bill state, legislative interventions like this bill fail to consider the low survival rates and the medical expertise availability and financial resources required to enable 
advanced neonatal care for premature births. So I want to ask you a question. Is 204 babies born alive and left to die from 2018 to 2022 a low number? Let me tell you, if one baby was born alive and left to die, this bill would still be worth it. Finally, they state, mandating supposed human rights measures for fetuses with medical conditions incompatible with life or detrimental to the mother's health violates prevailing medical and ethical care standards. And this is perhaps the most deceptive of all. At all, of all. This bill in no way is mandate, mandating supposed human rights measures for fetuses. This bill is mandating, mandating human rights for children who've been born alive. If a child is born with a condition that doesn't allow them to live long, if a child is born and the mother doesn't want that child, does that mean that we are just to let the baby die without giving him or her every opportunity to support life? Of course not. Children by choice, apparently, and I quote, emphasize the importance of patient-centered care, wherein healthcare practitioners prioritize the individual needs and preferences of each patient to ensure quality, compassionate care and optimal patient out outcomes. My question here is what about the patient-centered care and the prioritizing of the needs and preferences of the babies born alive? Are they not patients too? Why do those opposing the bill feel the need to completely dismiss the needs of the most vulnerable patients of all, babies fresh out the womb? Again, most healthcare practitioners are horrified that this takes place. To conclude, all the arguments I've made above, you'll hear again in some form or other in the speeches after the break. But here's the reality. For the abortion industry, the fact that babies are born alive as a result of failed abortions is an inconvenient truth. And therefore, they're trying to minimize and brush under the carpet the reality of this happening. Don't be misled. We ask you to stick to the issue of what this bill seeks to address. And we ask that you're keeping out your minds and your hearts the testimonies like we just heard before. This committee has the opportunity to rectify this reality, and we urge and implore you to let this issue be voted on. Children are not a choice, they're a gift. And every child, wanted or unwanted, deserves to be treated with the same dignity and respect as any other Queensland-born child. Thank you and God bless. Thank you, Mr. Cliff. Um, Donald, did you want to add something? No, I wasn't going to. Oh, no, no, thanks. OK, thank you. I'll move to questions to my left first. Um, OK. Member for Moroni. Um, I'm absolutely gobsmacked. I wouldn't treat my dog like that. Um, and I'm sure 90% of Queenslanders wouldn't either. Mm. These, these living aborted fetuses breathing with a soul. Uh, so you tell me that the people of Queensland don't understand it. Why is there such a confusion around, you know, the references that you've just made to other submissions? What's, what's the confusing situation here? Like, it's a pretty easy tell if something's alive or not. I, um, I work in industries that mm -hmm. I know what's alive or not. Why is there such confusion? What was you, in your mind? Yeah, I feel, I, I feel like there's a failure to really understand um, the consequences of the abortion laws that are in place at the moment. That's, a, that's one issue. Um, so there's a real lack of education uh, for the public. Um, again, not many of these testimonies are shared by mainstream media. So the only opportunity that people have of hearing uh, horrific testimonies like, like these are, are basically from us at the moment. And that's why we're thankful for Robbie uh, that he, you know, he's put it forward because it gives us some exposure and it lets uh, Queenslanders know actually what is happening. Thank you. Um, sorry, yes, we are very tight on time, but yeah. Deputy Chair. Um, and, and please don't take this question as a lack of support for the bill. I, but um, based on what you're saying, if the Queensland legislation essentially provides a right to life, to anyone that's born um, uh, for medical care, then um, you could almost argue that we don't need this bill, we just need to follow our own rules. And so I'm wondering if this is perhaps a question in terms of technical scrutiny or a question for the health ombudsman or uh, whether 
we need some further advice, but perhaps there's already uh, implied protections in current legislation um, that we're not following. Would that be, because that's what I, heard, I feel like I heard you saying, is that we already have the law in place to protect these um, live births, um, but we're actually asking health protect practitioners to disregard those laws by withdrawing care. And, the, and this is the confusion, actually, because, you know, the reality is, why have the guideline then? Sorry? So why have the guideline if the rules are there? Do you know what I mean? I think um, have, having, um, yeah, clarity with regards to what actually is the rights of these children would be absolutely beneficial. See, Donna. Oh, I just, um, just the observation that um, the previous speaker, Louise, and midwife, uh, I was pretty shocked myself just to hear that even if you like under the old guidelines prior to this change, there were babies, uh, if they were born alive, they were to be wrapped and given some sort of protection. Even that's not being observed now. Um, and let alone, uh, we have a new set of guidelines to say, well, yes, that, um, that you could have a look at assessing the baby and seeing if there were signs for life. Um, where, where do we go if even the guidelines are meant to be observed by all, all hospitals so, handling this type of baby aren't being observed to start with? Why would they suddenly then decide, oh, well, it's a baby now, we better do what we have to do? <laughs> so it sounds to me like you're saying that the guidelines are actually in conflict with our law. No, what I'm trying to say is the guidelines, even as they are, don't seem to be observed by what the, the witness of the midwife said. I'm just, Jay, I'm just sorry, sorry, member for Annie, we're, we're tight on time, but I did have a, a I'm trying to clarify in my yeah. mind, you quote those numbers um, and you, you talk to failed abortions. Do you have any idea how many um, people um, miscarry um, in Queensland? Can you give us an idea of the numbers of babies that are born? Nothing to do with termination of pregnancy, um, but are born premature and early. Um, with no signs of life. Is there any any context there? Like removing the whole termination of pregnancy, people miscarry, sadly yes. and tragically. It's happened. Yes, of course. Um, and no, so I don't particularly have any idea myself of numbers. Um, and, and my experience is the mothers <coughs> and parents are absolutely um, gutted by that experience. Yes. Yeah. Mm. Look, we... we yeah, we've experienced that in our families as well. Yeah, you know, yeah. of course, you know that's that's horrendous. But my my concern with that with that is we're trying to create a straw man here. But the, that's not actually the issue. The issue is with babies being born alive. Oh, I'm just trying to clarify those um, under the termination pregnancy that you've okay. quoted and the f um, failed pregnancies where people miscarry it at a number of yeah. weeks. I'm just trying to get that yeah, in my head. But anyway, sure. look, I, I apologise. We are, yep. and I apologise to those here. We are very, very tight on time. We could have this discussion for yep. a long time. Thank you. Um, thank, you. thank you both very, very much for your um, attendance here today. Can I call to the table um, Dr...